What's going on, y'all? So listen. The haves and the half nots, you guys. I got to get right into it because y'all know Greenleaf is coming on right after the haves and the half nots. So make sure y'all check it out. Yes, I will be reviewing it. Why wouldn't I? It's the continuation of the season. Y'all know that's one of my shows. Y'all be asking some dumb questions sometimes. But that's neither here nor there. But just to clear that up. And it also comes on tomorrow. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday, is this regular time and day, okay? This is a special two-hour premiere. Anyway, we'll get in that next um in the video later. Half and Half Nights, Season 5, Episode 18, well, 19, Haunted by the sur uh, Surname. Listen, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It was a couple of parts up in here that made me go, well, shit. <laughs> Okay, let me just get this little dude out the way. Charles is getting on my goddamn nerves, okay? We start the episode off where it left off last week with him telling Candace that in order to make this murder go away, we're going to have to pin it on somebody. This man suggested that we're going to pin it on Benny, her brother. She said, look, bro, you can put that shit on any and everything else, but you're not going to put that on my brother. Oh, you love your brother that much? Hell yeah, I love my brother that much. What are you talking about? Don't you got kids? He said, that's a different type of love. I said, what? I mean, I get it. But what? That's still blood. I mean, but come on. You did all this research on her. You know where she, you probably know what fucking um, blood type she is. But you don't realize and know you can see that. Her and Benny always had this tight connection, even when they're pissed off at when Benny pissed off at her for some stuff that she done. He will always have his sister back. So why would you even suggest Benny of all people? That was dumb in itself. And she was like, Didn't you have a wife that you um, you know, was madly in love with and all this stuff? I mean, that's what I read. He said, Oh, so that's what you read, right? And I'm sitting here like, so you just putting that stuff out there. And it almost sounded as if, no, we was just doing that shit for um, publicity purposes and image purposes. But I mean, she passed away. I did love her, but I wasn't in love with her. That's what it sounds to me. Okay. And I'm sitting here like, you could have came up with anybody, like a bum off the street that didn't know nothing. You could have came off and since you all up in her background and shit, why you ain't find a long lost cousin that ain't about shit? All right, like, it was just dumb. And she basically said, listen, what I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to tell you this, listen to my mouth, listen and then read the lips and everything. Don't put this shit on my brother. If that's what it has to be for me to be with you or whatever, we can fuck this shit over because I ain't got time. All right? I go turn myself in, my damn self, before you put anything on my brother. I said, you better do that shit, Candace. I was like, well, I can't have somebody that's like you a con and working for, you know, wanting for murder up there with me on my inauguration. She said, bitch, who said I wanted to go with you on your inauguration? She said, I was going to take my daughter. Take your daughter. Bitch, I don't care. You know, Candace was over it at this moment. Over it. Next thing you know, we see Candace going over there to Erica's place. Well, her apartment. Nope. Her room in the hotel. Bitch, this was an eye-opening scene for a second because I was like, I'm confused as to why all of a sudden this bitch flipped on Candace and been acting all this way like, you know, I got your back, bitch. And then all of a sudden you want to go play pussy with um, Ward and all that. And, and, and you, Erica caused her son to get killed because Erica was the one that gave him the location. Let's just be honest, all right? And Ward, he's just an indignant ass motherfucker. Don't want to hear shit. I mean, Candace lied about the amount of money, but that wasn't nothing worth all this shit all right mitch told you who set you up it was him okay and you still want to pin it on her so he's directing his anger at the wrong people but anyway she get up in there trying to i said girl the way she came in i knew candace was about to spill some shit you know it's universal language when you come up to your girlfriends or your niggas house your friends or whatever regardless whether it's male or female y'all got we got this body language when we about to let it loose like girl nigga let me tell you what happened bitch you know she just had that body language and i said candace if you open up your mouth i'm gonna slap the shit out of you through this tv okay that hoe is not to be trusted and kind of find out she really is a hoe she candace's hoe and i said well bitch slap me twice too okay and call my ass a silly ass duck bitch because i didn't know that and now the shit is starting to make fucking sense okay so she's sitting there like girl 
I'm so goddamn frustrated. Like, I'm talking to this dude, and he's just so, ugh. Like, he's trying to, you know, throw his power around and, you know, trying to put on that uh, Benny is the one that killed. I said, first of all, you told Erica all this shit. That's the wrong step already. Erica trying to finish your sentence and shit. Why would he do that about Quincy murder? I said, so she know about the murder too? Why didn't you come and call me? And hell, I could have helped you. In a way that Candace was shutting her down so quickly. No. You couldn't have. There's something that you could have done. Shut the fuck up. I said, oh, okay, what the hell is type, what type of relationship is this? I thought y'all was friends. You know? And, um, couldn't find out, no. No, they cool. But, Candace all of a sudden looked at Erica. Erica was like, but why don't you just, you might as well just, and before she can get the sentence out, Candace slapped the soul out of fucking Erica. I had to look up and say, bitch, what the fuck just happened? Why she slap her that hard? And then I said, girl, she didn't say go kill your mama or kill somebody. What you talking about? Well, where this come from? Candace looked at her and said, bitch, don't you ever in your mouth talk to me like that. My name is goddamn Candace, okay? I ran your ass. When I was out here doing this shit, you was my motherfucking bottom bitch. I said, well, there you go. Now, in pimp terminology, that's the main bitch that was there. And she in charge. She in charge of that bitch. And that bitch gonna be in charge of the other girls. She get preferences to the other girls. I said, so you was running this hoe? And then I looked at Candace and I said, it kind of makes sense. I was like, so no wonder why Erica out here pimp, uh, uh, flipping on her ass. Okay. And... She was like, oh my God, no, no, I wasn't going to say anything. She was like, I wasn't going to say that, you know, you should put it on Benny or whatever. She was like, you shut your goddamn mouth. I said, Candace, you better put your foot down. She was like, let me tell you something. I'm going to get a couple of your dresses, okay? She was like, fine, whatever you need. You should stay here. No, I ain't finna stay up in this bitch right here. But let me just tell you something. Remember when I asked to borrow that dress last time? Uh-huh, girl, what happened? She was like, listen, it was this smell on the dress that I couldn't get out and it just stuck with me. It reminded me of something. I'm trying to figure out where did it come from. I said, girl, where did it come from? And then it hit me. The ghetto. I said, why y'all keep... So the ghetto got a smell. <laughs> I said, no, bitch. It came from the projects where fucking war stay at. And she did say, war. Smell like that cheap ass nigga war. And she was like, let me fucking find out that you fucking around with this dude. You know I don't know him. You know I don't fuck with him like that. So, you know, it's all to the good. She was a little shook for a second. And I said, can't this really do be putting a snack down on your ass, huh? Pimp, pimp. Pimping ain't easy out in these hoes. Hoes ain't loyal either. So you should sure already know and be in your P's and Q's and all that shit. Bitch telling her all your goddamn business. You stop short of telling her everything. But no, girl. When Candace, Candace said she came in there to take a dress, Candace left there with a few items. <laughs> okay, bitch. Reparations up in this house. She left out. Here go this goddamn Erica getting on the phone with war. She pissed now. I said, what was all of this at when, um, you know, Candace was up in there. You, you wake do all this shit, talking all big and bad when she was in there. I know you got to keep on the act and all that stuff, but you on the phone like daddy going to do something. Daddy, oh my God, you got to kill this hoe. This bitch slapped me. He was like, okay, and I can't do no shit about it right now. Um, The heat is on me. I can't do nothing. What you want? I said, Can Erica... Why are you calling War and trying to tell him that she there at the hotel like he going to bring his black ass up into this rich white folk hotel, okay, and start some shit? She said, won't you just bring somebody here and just take care of him? No, girl, this ain't the hood found drop motel, okay, that don't nobody really give a shit about. Hell no, nah, you can't do no shit like that. You trying to get him caught up? He already on the run. <laughs> what are you doing? Put your feelings away and shut the fuck up and let this shit play out. Okay? You do your job and everything could go the way it's supposed to go. But anyway, moving on from that, okay? I said, Candace put the smack down on. Slap that hoe one more time. Okay? Slap that bitch another time for me. Wyatt and Anna, who Anna... I don't care what nobody say. Okay, Anna is there at White's house. They still watching TV. And, you know, she the the door, there's a knock at the door. She go get the door. 
they don't the person don't even come into the door all we see is the arm reaching in giving her her bag and i said well damn you moving in why you said the same thing she was like yep i'm about to be a live-in coach and counselor for you you know and like according to her she said his shadow i'm gonna be your shadow I do like the fact that she is trying to get him to talk about stuff, what's going on, you know, why do you feel a certain way, and who made you feel this, and who are the people in your life, and, you know, he brought up Amanda, and why he don't like to talk about her, and, you know, how um, he wanted to become a fireman, and his parents said that was a stupid idea, the dad wanted him to take over a certain business, and, you know, or become a lawyer, and the mom wanted him to take over the business. The dad either wanted him to become a lawyer. That's why Amanda became a lawyer. That's how Amanda comes up. And he was like, you see how that ended? And you know what? We need to go ahead and get back on Amanda's storyline because Amanda was not. She was killed. She was fucking killed. And y'all already implied that. All right. After y'all want to say it was suicide, Jennifer, she said that bitch, she was killed. We knew that she was killed. Okay. So who killed her, all right, let's get back on that. And again, where the fuck is Celine? Did y'all literally just take her out? The Malones came in and took her out, and the sons, okay? Because remember, that older son and the young son is Jim, all right? So what happened? They just literally disappeared off the set. They gonna pop up at the end of this season? I'm confused. Like, this storyline left open handed. Jim went to jail, and Celine and them left. Like, did I miss something? But anyway, all this stuff was going on, and. I'm just, I was just like, Anna, he, she, she, she just came in so randomly. And I know Jeffrey called her down there, but I'm like, do this really happen? But you know, this is a fictional TV show, so you can play around with reality and whatnot, you know, put fake shit up in there. So that's fine. But I don't care when nobody say something about Anna just ain't clicking well with me. Like I just don't trust the bitch. Okay. And she just kept on bringing up Dr. Jarvis and all this stuff. And I'm sitting here like. Are y'all running a scam on him? Is Dr. Jarvis going to come out of somewhere and y'all going to take him for everything he got? Like, it's just, she just got too comfortable too quick for me. Okay? It's like, ooh, I don't get it. I'm, She's rubbing me all types of raw and I don't like to be rubbed raw. Okay? Mm-mm. And then as a big bitch, you don't like that. Okay? That's just not, that's not comfortable. All right? So, it's just... I don't know. If I, am I the only one that's feeling that way? Let's discuss in the comments, okay? Then why get a phone call from the um, police station or whatever, the DA office saying that um, about Jennifer Salison and all this stuff and saying he don't know where she at and what's going on, uh, what's, what's going on. And that's when he get informed that, you know, she's dead. He was like, wait a minute, we just had, she gave me immunity and all this stuff. How's she dead? And was like, well, I don't know, but see, we need to talk to everybody who had anything dealing with her. And he was like, well, I ain't do shit to her. He was like, well, we probably sure that you didn't. And was like, well, you can come down to the office and we can talk or we can come meet you. He said, bro, you can come to my house tonight, right now. I said, that's what you do, Wyatt. Show him that you ain't got nothing to fucking hide. Bring that ass over here right now, because, um... I just got out of fucking rehab, bitch, okay? I was coked the fuck up when she was dead, okay? So, you know, why you went to clean that shit? But moving on from that, <laughs> at the goddamn police station, they was about to have, you know, Veronica got them, uh, what's her name, Hannah, in there to speak to Benny. <laughs> Veronica gonna say, right, come on, that's his grandma. Come on, grandma. I said, leave it to fucking Veronica to throw some petty shade up in there. And she was like, I'm his mother. Oh, right, right, right. I, said, <laughs> I can't stand that bitch, but I, she makes me chuckle so much. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> She played too many games. But, you know, they go to that little back and forth petty shit. And her and Benny and uh, uh, um, Hannah, they up in there with uh, Benny. And they're talking and, you know, trying to figure out what's going on and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, Benny says, you know, they came up in here. They took my DNA. And that's when Veronica said, now mention, he did say last week, 
you can't take my DNA because I don't give you permission to. And they made it seem like, yes, we can, because technically we not um in a police station. This is Homeland Security, and we can do whatever the fuck it is that we want to. That's still against his goddamn rights, bitch. They took his DNA, and Veronica picked up like, wait a minute, who the fuck did this? And you gave it to him? He said, no, they took it from me. And I said, bitch, right there and there, I said, oh, when Veronica clicked on that, I was like, damn, given that Charles is the one that's doing this shit, he can fucking have that DNA placed anywhere at any time and put that shit on him. They can fuck Benny's life up now. So Veronica said, let me go take care of this. She go out there getting on the phone. She get the name of the two officers, um, Secret Service and the Homeland dude who was supposed to have did it. And, you know, she trying to find them and get some information and all that stuff. She tells Hannah that, uh, well, Mitch and them that and all that stuff and, you know, they, she gonna take care of Veronica is on the case. Veronica may be a lot of things, but that bitch know what she talking about when she do her job, okay? But, um, Hannah was up in there talking to Benny, of course, giving her the same thing about, um, him the same thing about how, basically, Candace ain't shit. She got her baby killed. All this stuff is on her. You mean to tell me that you really didn't kill Ben, um, Quincy? He said, no, it was Jeffrey, but you can't say that because Veronica was in there. I ain't want her to know about it, Chad, and all this shit. You know, so they just do this shit back and forth. And uh, when she finally come out, uh, she, Catherine had to remind her that you got to go and, um, you know, take care of the shit at home with the baby and the funeral. But before that, Catherine was sent down there in that um, lobby with Mitch. So you and Malone, huh? I was like, what you getting at? And it was like, yeah, they had a little discussion about his name. She was like, so listen, I'm about to be a newly divorced woman. <laughs> so how about I have you come over <laughs> and do some things for me? He said, oh, yeah, put me on the payroll, put you on the payroll. But let me tell you, once I get through with you, you'll be paying me. I said, come on, pussycat, pussycat. Pussycat said, bitch. Come get this, and you're going to love this. It's going to be so good, you're going to be fucking paying me, bitch, okay? Mitch was like, girl, you for real? And she was like, dead ass. He said, girl, stop playing. Ain't going to get up. For I said, bitch, the way these student loans set up, I would have said, what time you want me, how many times you want me, and what else you want me to do? Let me just do some jaw exercise. Okay, let me stretch this tongue. You know, I'm just saying, let's be quite honest. Some of y'all, y'all, when y'all... Some of y'all some pros and shit. Y'all be acting like y'all don't do some stuff. Some of y'all done did some strange shit for a piece of chain, bitch. Don't even fucking act like it. With your man and with your bitch. I'm just saying. Any fucking way. We adults here. We adults here. Okay, moving on from that. But you do got to do them exercises. Because whether you give or you give, you know, your jaws can lock up either way. Bitch, y'all... So this is not the video for that. Because I just... If I was straight, I just don't see myself... Anyway, you're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Anyway, moving on from that. When they was about to leave the um, police station, here comes that other detective, George, that was like, I'm looking for you, um, Catherine. Oh, yeah, so let me tell you something. Um, Jennifer Salazar, she did. Oh, no, are you serious? What happened? I said, Catherine, you better fucking act like you don't know that you killed that bitch in your home. And then George was like, girl, Somebody killed her ass, and um, the last place that we seen her or we got record of her being is at your house, okay? Her car is there, or her car was, the GPS said that the car was there, and the phone and all that shit. So, we needed some stuff, um, we gonna have to question you. Veronica was standing in the background, I was waiting for Ver Veronica to blow up her spot, but Veronica wasn't gonna do that. Regardless of the shit that they was going through, Veronica said, nah, bitch. This my client. You can't speak to her and question her and search nothing without a fucking warrant. George was like, oh, so you got a whole bunch of clients. She was like, you damn right, bitch. So we can take care of this and do this the right way or we can go get uh, dirty with it. Which one you want to go with? He was like, all right, I'm going to get that goddamn warrant. She told Catherine, meet me at your house in 15 minutes. Catherine said, bitch, I don't trust you. She said, I know. Let's go. <laughs> get to the house. Veronica got a fucking gas jug. And she's just throwing the gas all over. I said, what are you doing, Veronica? That's a big-ass house. What are you trying to do? She said, we got to burn this shit. 
I said, Catherine, you gonna let her burn the goddamn house? She said, no, girl, what are you doing? Stop it, stop it. She was like, they want some evidence and shit. This whole house is fucking evidence, okay? Fuck, I said, I mean, you could have just went on ahead and got a cleaning crew. You could have got ghost cleaning crew or whatever from power and all that shit, you know. But I understand. I mean, this is a little extreme, so you just said torch the shit. And um, Catherine was like, all right, I guess. And then they went on ahead like that, match and threw it up in there and, um... Let that shit burn, okay? Just like Usher in his pants. They just letting that shit burn. And then Veronica said, you sure Jim not in there? Catherine said, I don't give a shit. <laughs> ah, oh, bitch just don't care. And the last thing that I really want to talk about, okay, well, back at the police station, you know, Justin popped up on Veronica and he was trying to get her to get that video back to him. And at first, he was being really aggressive with it. But then he kind of softened up his stance and was like, could you please give me back the video? You're going to show that video? She was like, I really am. Okay? I told you to leave my son alone. But, Chad, you up here following him, stalking him, doing this, sleeping in his bed and all this stuff. You know? Um, and then he was like, could you just give me the video back? She was like, what you going to do? You going to throw me and hit me with strawberries, rainbows, and... Feathers, I said, bitch. Now, let me tell you something. Who put that line in the script, okay? Because that sounds like some shit I probably would have said when I say Jeffrey be shooting out unicorns and glitter and gold out his puss. Like, who put that line up in the script? Y'all did a good job. Let me copyright that shit. But, um, anyway, I kind of laughed. Because she was just offensive as hell. But it was fun. I don't know why I just found it funny. When she, he came up on her and poured her, he said, girl, you strong. I said, you know what? Because it's Veronica and it's like at this point, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no speaking no common sense into her ass at this point. But Justin basically said, you keep on playing, you gonna see what's gonna happen. I said, just you ain't about shit. Okay, you playing with the wrong bitch, all right? You know, this woman tried to literally burn her husband down to the ground while he was in the bed to sleep, Okay. It ain't shit in the face her right now, okay? Your threats are so idle to her. Then we, the last thing that happened, Jeffrey goes in there to see Melissa, bitch. I forgot Melissa was still up in there on suicide watch. Ain't nobody in there watching her with all that equipment up in there where she can come on in there and just kill herself anytime. I mean, she could take the IV and just strangle herself with it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying if she was really about that life. And she was like, girl, why are you in here to Jeffrey? Leave me alone. Next thing you know, Miss Doris come up in there. That's her mama. So you doing this shit again, huh? I said, wait a minute. Excuse me. Excuse me? From what she made it sound like, this her first time coming up here since this shit happened. And it was now, oh my God, baby. Why are you doing this shit to yourself? What happened? I mean, you ain't got to be so puppy doggish with it, but you ain't have to be so blunt and say, bitch, so you doing this shit again. When the person has committed suicide, well, no, they did. When the person has attempted to commit suicide, you don't come out so harshly to them to make them already feel like you don't give a shit, okay? They already feeling like they have nothing to live for, and then the way that you come up in there... You just making it seem like, fuck it. And I said, right when she said that, I said, well, damn, that's how Veronica got her. Because they the same people. She didn't give a shit that her um, daughter was about to die and kill herself. Because she was like, this the third time you did it, huh? Okay? So, I thought she was going to take your father's death well. But obviously, you're not. Why are you doing this shit? You need to suck this shit up and get it together, okay? Don't nobody give a damn about you. We, this is about us and this family. Veronica owns us right now. She going to do for us. And you need to get your act together. And she bounced. Okay? Did you hear what she told Jeffrey? Oh, so you the one that I heard like hand jobs. I said, she said, baby, listen, we don't do handouts like you do hand jobs. I said, that was a good one. Offensive as hell, as hell, but that was a good one. Jeffrey had to let her know, um, yeah, I am a gay man. Yeah, I like to get my dick sucked in a hand job here and there. But let me just tell you this. You don't have to be gay to have a hand job. I said, tell her. Because wife and, and, and girls be giving their niggas hand jobs in the cars and everything. Okay, come on. Like, like stop. Let's stop doing that shit, bitch. Don't tell me y'all ain't ever been up in the movie theater and tried to do some shit together. I know what you straights do. Let me stop. Because that sounded so rude. I know what y'all heterosexuals do. Okay? The same thing we do. Okay? Everything's universal, bitch. 
somebody gonna be like, oh my God, you don't have to talk like that. And, you know, you're very offensive. And, you know, that is why there's so much division in the world right now. Why did you have to call? Shut up. Shut up and just laugh, okay? Shut up and just laugh, all right? You know? But anyway, that is the end of the episode. No, it is not. At the very end of the episode, Candace get a knock at her door. And who is it? Charles. And Landon. Now, Landon, you could have stayed away because you still a bitch. As we saw in the preview, you don't give a shit about Candace, all right? You really don't, because you still trying to tell Charles, why are you fucking around with this ghetto trash, okay? Why are you fucking around with this bitch, all right? And I'm sitting here like, you just delivered some heartbreaking news to her, and you still going to act like this to him? Like, nigga, it's not your campaign, and if he wants to do it, let him do it. But Charles finally told her that her son died. He was like, I was supposed to talk at this, stop the violence thing, and, you know, there was a shooting, and a child got killed or got caught up in it, and the child just so happened to be your son. Stop playing. Is he okay? No, he's not going to make it. He got shot. I said, he's not going to make it. The baby is dead. He didn't make it. What are you talking about? All right? But she was like, oh, my God, get out. Get out. You know, I was surprised that she went on ahead and showed emotions right off the back. That shows that she did care about her son. All right, now she pissed. She pissed. And I said, after 15 fucking episodes, she found out that her son is dead. I am glad about that. Okay, now we can get that out the way. Now it's fucking revenge on war. All right? And she know war did it. And now she want that ass dead. So she finna fuck with the Malones or whatever. Bitch, it, it, it's just a lot of stuff that happened. Okay? I don't know how many more episodes we got. But um, I'm going to go watch Greenleaf. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.